Now, Fred asked me to talk about this question. Changes, threats or chances? Well, the answer to any question, I'm going to stop taking off my shirt. I'm not going to continue, so don't <laughs> worry. But the answer to any question that we ask starts with, it depends. And this is what we are going to try to do. We are going to try to think about what are these changes. Are they threats or, ch or chances? And the answer is, it depends. And I will try to show you actually what does it depend on. Okay? So, when I talk about any topic, and it can be professional, it can be personal, I really believe so, and I can tell you I have a lot of experience. I've been in this world for many, many years. I'm not going to give you the number. I will just tell you that I've been in protection, automation, control and communications for uh, 43 years so far, okay? So based on my personal experience in my personal life and my professional life, what I figured out is that whatever you do, you have always to start with these three questions in this specific order. Because what I've seen many times related to IEC 61850, you go to somebody and you start discussing IEC 61850 and you ask them, what do you want to do? And they say, we want to have a 61850 solution. This is the answer of the last question. They're saying, this is, we want a solution, we want a specific solution without thinking about what exactly they're trying to do and why they're trying to do it. And I think many of the presentations that you're going to see today and tomorrow and hopefully at the workshop portion of this event, you will be answering these questions, okay? So I will try to go into this order and see actually why we are going into IEC 61850, what we are trying to do and why we are doing it, okay? So first of all, before we start talking again about any topic, we need to have a clear understanding of the meaning of the words that we are using. Because when Christoph is going to talk about the principles and the uh, ideas behind IC 61850, he is going to mention one thing that plays a very key role in the definitions in the standard, which is the semantics. Because if we don't have a very clear understanding of what is the meaning of the terms that we are using, what is the meaning of every named variable that is being used in the standard, we may end up with a lot of misunderstanding, which means loss of interoperability and a lot of challenges in the implementation of the standard. So the same thing applies to the definitions of the terms that we are going to use. So when Fred said, talk about change, the first thing I did is I went on the web and I looked for the definitions of a change. So what do we find over there? First of all, one option is the opposite of keeping the same. Okay, because you can define something by saying what it is or by saying what it is not. It is the same way that you can build a sculpture doing different approaches. You can start with clay and you start adding more and more and more and more until you define the shape that you would like to present in your art. Or you can start with a piece of marble and chopping off pieces of this until you get to the shape that you want to present as your art. So the same with the definitions. We can say what it is or we can say what it is not. So one definition is the opposite of keeping the same. Another definition is to make something different. Now in order to make something different, you need to start with something that you know and then you say, no, this is not good enough, we need to make it different in order to meet the goals of our application. Another change is replacing something with something 
different with, uh, with another thing. So actually we can change something with something similar or we can change something with com something completely different. And again, it depends on the task that you have in hand. And another version of the definition is to undergo a, mo a modification. And when we talk about the transition from one technology to another, these are the kind of things that we need to think about. Now, I see some young people in the room. I see some people that are not as young as others. And depending on how old you are, we have seen a lot of change. And it is very interesting when you think about these changes, how depending on how many changes you have experienced, your point of view really becomes quite different. And this is why the more changes that you have experienced, the more you understand actually what is the meaning of the change and the better you can answer the question, is it a threat or is it a chance? And I can say that's why we start with the answer, it depends. On one hand, it depends on what is the change, how big is the change, how different is the new from the old. But another issue is, it depends on the person. Because there are some people that love the change. If there is not enough change in their life, they look for the change because otherwise they get bored. But there are also people that hate change. And that's why for the people that hate change, it's a threat because they have to live in a different environment. And for the people that love change, it's a chance to do something better. And this is why it is very important what kind of approach you're going to take. This is why, for example, when we talk about the existing installations of IC61850 substations, there are already tens of thousands of substations with IC61850 around the world. I was last week in an event in San Francisco called IPC Grid, and there was a professor from Tsinghua University in, in China, and what he told me is that by this moment in China, they already have 1,600, 1,600 digital substations, meaning substations with sampled values. And in North America, and in uh, Europe and in many other countries, people are just starting with pilot installations of digital substations. Why is that? Because it is how do you implement change? There are many places where you go and you say we need to change from one technology to another, and the head of the protection department, and I have this happen to me personally, I went, for example, when I was back in Bulgaria, maybe 30 years ago, I went to the head of the protection department and I said, we need to implement something using programmable logic controllers, for example, for a system integrity protection scheme. What was the answer? Over my dead body. So when you get this answer to a request for change, you have two options. You have to say, okay, we are not changing or you have to hire assassins to kill the guy so you can make the change, okay? Now, don't say Alex told us to kill our management. <laughs> I didn't say that, okay? But it is really, really very interesting how different people approach change. Another example that I can give you is maybe five years ago I was in Namibia now, when you think about Namibia, many people are going to say, oh, this is a third world country, they have a lot of dunes and a lot of sand in the desert, but you wouldn't expect anything exciting going on there. Well, they took me to six substations, and in these six substations, they were using IC61850. They didn't use sampled various or process bus yet because the technology was not at the... Uh, substation hardened level at the time from multiple suppliers, but at least they were using goose messages for everything. They were using it to initiate breaker failure, they were using it to initiate reclosing, they were using it for interlocking. All of that was done based on IC61850. And when you think about why, 
The why was because they had a group of young people with a young manager and they said, we are going to make the change, we are going to improve our applications based on this new technology. They didn't take it as a threat, they took it on themselves in order to make something better. And this is why when we start thinking about a project implementing IC61850, one of the key answers to the question, is this going to be a successful project, is it depends who is responsible for the project. If you give it to somebody that doesn't want to change, that sees it as a threat, it's going to be a complete failure. But if you give it to the people that want to take a chance to improve the way we do things, it is going to be a success. So it is very, very critical to take the right approach and find the right people to be successful in your project. Okay? So I'm already behind on my schedule, but Fred is going to kick me if I am running over time because this is what I will be doing later with all the presenters. We have to maintain the schedule, very important. So now, this is something else that I would like you to think about because a lot of the issues that we discuss at this workshop are actually philosophical. They require us to get out of the box, to get out of this attitude that that's the way we always did it, because this is something completely different. And I'm going to give you some examples to show that actually when you use this technology, you have to start thinking differently, because it opens a lot of new opportunities, and many people are going to say, you are crazy, but there is nothing wrong with being crazy. Actually, crazy people are the ones that change the world. I remember reading some years ago a quotation, and the question was, how do inventions happen? And inventions happen because everybody knows that something is impossible, but there is a crazy guy out there that doesn't. And when you don't know that something is impossible, you're not restrained by the box, you're out of the box, and then you can come up with a new idea that is going to change the world. Another thing that is related to what you see on the screen is the perception of things. Many times when we have a ch change in front of us, we are scared. Why are we scared? Because it is an unknown. We don't know what is behind it. This is why we are afraid to die. Why? Not because we know that there is something else out there, because we don't know what it is. There is definitely something else out there. Because life and death is a transition. It is transition from one state to another state. But we just don't know what is in this other state, and that's why we are afraid. Well, I can tell you, it's very nice. Okay? It's a different world. It's beautiful. It's paradise. Unless you are an evil person that will go to hell. <laughs> but again, what is hell? We have no idea. Actually, somebody draws a picture and somebody tells you a story. Don't listen to anybody. Find your own way. But just don't be afraid. That's the key. So what is this when the caterpillar thought the world was over because it thought, okay, I'm going through a change. I have no idea what is out there. Actually, it became a butterfly. Now, is a caterpillar better than a butterfly or a butterfly better than a caterpillar? I guess it depends. It depends on who you are. But in general, we think the butterfly is better because you can fly wherever you want instead of just crawling on a branch or something, eating leaves, trying to become eventually a butterfly without knowing it, okay? Now, another issue that we need to think about when we think about change is how are we going to survive the change? And survival is more or less based on adaptation. So when our environment changes, 
we need to be able to adapt our behavior. And chameleons are a good example of this. Why? Because if they're in a different environment, in order to survive, in order to not be seen by the predators that would like to eat them for breakfast or lunch, they have to adapt their color so they're not that visible and they can better escape actually from the eyes of the predators that would like to have them as a meal, okay? So the same thing applies to the world that we are living in. We live in an environment that is continuously changing and it is changing in many different ways. It is changing from the point of view of the electric power system that we need to protect, automate and control. It is changing from the point of view of the environment where we're working. Because in the past, actually, I remember when there were so many more engineers in a manufacturer, in a utility, there were R&D groups, there were application groups, that were people that were doing studies. It was a completely different world. There were a lot of people with a lot of experience. What is happening today is we are losing the experience, we are shrinking the number of people working on the projects, we don't have enough resources, we are not allowed to go to meetings, to working groups, to conferences. So it is a very, very different environment. So we need to be able to adapt in order to survive. And IEC 61850, again, as I'm going to give you some examples, is a tool that allows us to much better adapt to the changing conditions in the power system in order to improve the efficiency of the protection, automation and control systems. So after all these introductory words, we start answering the questions. So what are we doing? We are changing the way the protection, automation and control systems work. Okay, this is what we are trying to do. Now, obviously, we are not doing it just for fun. So the next question is why are we doing it? First of all, the industry is changing. So in this changing industry, we cannot do things the way we did it 50 years ago. We have to do something different. Why? Because when we talk about smart grid, actually smart grid is one of the buzzwords that we hear everywhere. Everybody is talking about the smart grid without many people actually knowing what they're talking about, but it still sounds good, okay? And they feel that when I say, oh, we are working on a smart grid, everybody will say, oh, this guy probably is very smart to be doing a smart grid. Unfortunately, many of these people that use these words are not that smart at all, but it doesn't matter, okay? So when we look at the definitions, there are two main definitions. There is the European definition and there is the North American or US definition. And they have something in common. One of the requirements is to improve the efficiency of the protection, automation and control systems. Another requirement is to improve the safety of the system. Another requirement is to reduce the fault clearing time and reduce the requirements for outage time because all of this actually leads to an improvement in the reliability, availability and security of the electric power system. So all these requirements that you see on the screen are actually key components into the transition from where we were in the last century into the smart grid of the 21st century. Okay? So now we are getting to the last question, which is how are we going to do it? And the answer is IEC 61850, okay? So I'm going to go into a few specific examples. It, I do not pretend that this is covering everything because you know your environment. You know the problems that you experience, but I'm sure if you put on the table your problems, I'm sure that all the experts that are here that are going to be talking today and tomorrow together can give you an answer that is going to be a IC 61850 solution to whatever issue you have in your system. Actually, I'm pretty sure that I can give you a 61850 solution even to your personal problems. 
<laughs> For example, if you have a problem with your, uh, I don't know, boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, children, whatever, 61850 is also a solution. Now, how exactly? It depends. <laughs> but you can challenge me and we will see if I can find a 61850 based solution to your personal problems, okay? Okay, so now let's look into some specific examples of how IC61850 can help us with the issues that we have in the power system. This is a conventional substation. Now, by the way, I really don't know what I'm talking about because I'm not sure what is coming on the next slide. So to me, it's an adventure as well. The same way, because otherwise it may get too boring, okay? So when we have a conventional substation, what do we know? We have a protection panel that is interfacing with the process. This is what we call everything in the substation we call a process. Now, this process has multiple aspects. First of all, we have the analog interfaces that are bringing current and voltage analog signals into the protection panel. And then we have the breaker, and I didn't put it, it's a very simplified one-line diagram, there are no switches, there are no transfer buses, etc., etc. It is just to illustrate the concept. But the main idea is we have a lot of hard wiring, okay? Now, what is the issue with hard wiring? Well, first of all, some people say, oh, hard wiring is much better than IC61850. Why? Because I see the wires. Okay, so you can sit and look at the wires for weeks and you're not <laughs> going to get anything out of looking at the wires. You don't even know if this wire is conducting anything. Because we as human beings do not have the sensors to know if anything is flowing through this circuit. So to figure out if there is a signal going through this wire, we need tools. But once we start talking about tools, tools can be anything. So we can have actually meters that we use to measure the uh, resistance or whatever of the circuit, or amp meters to measure the current, or we can have a web tool or a HMI that is going to tell us what is happening in this network. Or we may have, Fred mentioned, the ID scout that is on your memory sticks that you can install that is going to show you if there are goose messages or whatever signals going through the substation communications network. And it is much better than looking at the wires, okay? The other problem with these wires is the tremendous time that it takes to build such a substation. And this is why when we start talking about how IC61850 is implemented and why it is implemented, you're going to find it in many places that you would never expect. For example, two years ago I was talking to a guy about substations in North Dakota. Okay? Now, North Dakota in the U.S. is something like a third world country. Okay? Because there is not much happening in North Dakota. There is a lot of wind, it's very cold in the summer, in the winter very hot in the summer, and almost nothing there except what is called rednecks. Okay? Now, the guy said, any new substation that is being put in service in North Dakota today is based on IC61850. And when I asked him why, he said because they couldn't find, there is, you heard about the fracking, okay? The fracking when they inject uh, pressure water into the ground to extract the gas so they can, you know, use it for vehicles or power stations or whatever. In order to be able to build the substations for the fracking, they needed very quickly to have substations. And they couldn't find enough technicians to do all this wiring using hard wires. So they said, we are going to replace all of this with goose, and this is what they did. And they had a lot of savings, not only in the cost of the substation, but in the time that it took to put it in service. So that's why the reasons to go from 
one solution to another. The reason for change in this case was driven by the requirements to put something very quickly in service. Okay? Another issue is what we are seeing now in many, many countries, especially in Germany. When you fly over Germany or when you drive uh, on the freeways or on the roads in Germany, you see all these huge amount of wind generators. The problem with wind generators is they're sensitive. There is something that is called a voltage sag, okay? So what you see here is this is a single phase to ground fault and when you have a single phase to ground fault you see here in the faulted phase I have a very significant voltage sag. The problem with the wind generators is that they may not be able to withstand this voltage sag. And because of that what is happening is many countries have introduced what is called a right through capability curve. What does it mean? It means that there is an area within which the wind generator should not disconnect from the system. It should withstand this voltage sag and then there is an area that if it goes below a certain level and longer than a certain duration, it is allowed to trip. However, imagine if you have a country that has 40 or 50 percent of the electric power generated by wind generators and you have an area that is affected by a short circuit fault. This short circuit fault may lead to the loss of a large number of wind generators that is going to present a stability problem. So now we need to start thinking how we can solve this problem. And again, IEC 61850 is the solution. Why? Because if I have a fault in zone 1, it is going to be cleared without a time delay. However, if my fault is in the zone 2, and depending on where in the system this is, and what is the length of the line, etc., the voltage sag caused by this fault clearing, that can be several hundred milliseconds, depending on the setting of the zone 2, I may lose a lot of these generators. And this is why what we do is we use what we call accelerated protection schemes. The problem with these accelerated protection schemes is that they require a communication interface between the two substations. And this is something that when it is a dedicated channel, it becomes quite expensive. So in conventional substations, we may have direct interface between the two distance protections in IC61850 we may do so what we call uh, tunneling using direct interface between Ethernet switches at the two ends. But this still is a quite expensive solution. And people may say, we don't have the money to do accelerated protection using fiber on all the uh, transmission or sub-transmission lines in the system. This is where IC61850 again comes into play. So what we can do is we can do the accelerated scheme through the cloud. Now somebody may say, you're crazy. Well, yeah, we, this is an established fact. So we don't need to repeat this all the time. But if you think about crazy, what crazy does mean? It means, in this case, getting out of the box. Some people say, yeah, but it's unpredictable. It's non-deterministic. We don't know how exactly how much time it takes. Well, that's why we have tools. We have tools because fear and uh, uh, fear of change is driven, as I said, by the unknown. What does it mean? It means that we don't know really what is the time for a message, what we call the R goose or the routable goose, to go from one point to another. This is why Fred and Benton in the US did a measurement between Houston, Texas and Klaus in Austria and they measured an average time of the transmission in the range between 70 and 90 milliseconds, I, I think. <coughs> now, nobody is going to do an accelerated scheme transatlantic. That's why they did measurements between Austria and Germany and these measurements showed a time that was in the range of 20 milliseconds. 
which is the time of the conventional communication channels that we have been using in the last maybe 30, 40 years to accelerate protection schemes. Now, people say, but what about cybersecurity? Well, cybersecurity, keep in mind, even if somebody sends a fake goose message, somebody hacks into the system and sends a fake goose message, it's not going to result in anything. Why? Because we have a local supervision. It is called a permissive signal. It's a signal that is permitting the accelerated tripping. But if I don't see a fault with this relay that is seeing a fault in zone 2, I'm not going to trip. And on top of that, the routable goose has cyber security in it, etc., etc. So I'm just giving you an idea <coughs> of another solution that can help actually improve the performance without any additional cost for communications equipment. When we go to the distribution level, there are a lot of protection schemes that we are traditionally using that are based on coordination of the inverse time over current protection of the transformer and the feeders. So for example, if I have a fault on this bus, it is going to be cleared, if, they, if we have no bus protection, it is going to be cleared by the backup protection of the transformer with a time delay. The problem with this is that this time delay is going to result in a voltage sag that is going to be experienced by the wind generators on the healthy part of the distribution system that is going to result in their loss because of the right through characteristic. This is why we try to improve the fault clearing time by using a communications-based message uh, scheme, something that different people call different names. Some people call it inverse blocking. Really okay. Time yeah, okay. Well, I have to very quickly give you a couple more examples. One of them is failure of cities. Failure of cities have two different impacts. One is the city saturation, which is a traditional problem with cities. The other is CVT transients, that is a problem with the voltage transformers. And how do we solve these problems? We use non-conventional instrument transformers that are coming from different suppliers, from Alstom, ABB, etc., in order to improve actually the safety and eliminate these transient problems with the instrument transformers. Another tremendous benefit of the IC61850 digital substation solutions is the ability to do remote testing. And some people may say this is absolutely crazy. But there are crazy people out there. For example, RTE in France, they are in the process of commissioning right now a substation in uh, France that they want to implement remote testing. Why? Because there are very, very significant benefits in this technology. Imagine that you have to do testing in this substation in the mountains in the middle of the winter. You have to drive there. It is dangerous. Somebody can get into an accident. It is much more convenient to be able to connect remotely to the substation and run the remote testing there. Okay, this obviously cannot be done with the conventional hardwired solutions because you have to have somebody physically switching the switches and connecting the test equipment. That is why we have in IC61850 different tools that allow us to implement this remote testing. So what do we do? We have a remote computer that is connecting through a secure connection over the cloud to a test computer and then running the test uh, plans in order to test the system. This is possible only within the IC61850 digital substation. And this is the digital substations that allow us to do that. So I'm going to stop here. I can give you a lot more examples, but I'm pretty sure that all the speakers in the following presentations are going to cover in one form or another all these issues. So thank you very much and enjoy the show. And I hope we're going to have a lot of fun together. Okay? Thank you.